Oh cool, a Metroid Prime game. It's been a while since we've talked about an FPS on this channel. This should be fun. But first, I gotta try the game out for myself. Alright, here's my stylus. What do I need this for? For aiming? He's saying it's for aiming. You sure? Alright, this had better be good. If I asked you to name the best FPS game for the original Nintendo DS, what comes to mind? Is it the re-release of GoldenEye 007? Or maybe one of the five Call of Duty titles that released for the handheld console? Well, if you said either of these, you're wrong. Dead wrong. Because the best FPS on the original Nintendo DS is a game that, although you might not have bought it, you probably owned. This is Metroid Prime Hunters. Metroid Prime Hunters is an FPS game developed for the Nintendo DS. While the full game released on March 20th, 2006 in North America, OG DS owners may remember a demo version of the game called Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt, which was included with the DS when it launched in 2004. The demo itself featured a single player mode with various training scenarios, as well as a multiplayer deathmatch mode for local wireless communication. The demo was well received, considered a great showcase of what the DS was capable of, and two years later, the game released officially. Metroid Prime Hunters takes place between the original Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2. Samus goes on a mission to a region known as the Olympic Cluster after receiving a mysterious message alluding to the secret to ultimate power. Spooky. But. Unlike other games in the series, Samus isn't the only person investigating. Six other bounty hunters intercepted the same message and are looking to obtain the ultimate power for themselves. Thus, the hunter becomes the hunted. And by hunter, I mean us. And hunted? <laughs> Let's just say anyone not subscribed to the Action Esports YouTube channel. <laughs> The gameplay for Metroid Prime Hunters is very similar to that of past Metroid Prime games, albeit with simpler maps and systems to accommodate for the DS's lower computing power. For example, while the original Metroid Prime has four visors, Hunters only has two. The Scan Visor, which you can use to learn about enemies' weak spots and patterns of attack, and the Combat Visor, which is just the HUD, letting Samus know her energy levels and remaining ammo. On top of this, apart from typical upgrades such as energy tanks and missiles, or universal ammunition expansions, there are also seven different weapon upgrades found throughout the map used by the six hunters. Where things get weird are in the controls. Basically everything is done through the touch screen, which is used to aim, swap between weapons, change to morph ball, and use the scan visor. While the d-pad is used to move around, and the triggers to shoot. As you'd expect, the controls were a nightmare. Initial reviews called the controls quote, cramp-inducing, and pointed out that the interface on the touchscreen for the visor and weapon changes added quote, an unnecessary layer of complexity. That, coupled with the fact that the gameplay in the single player was incredibly repetitive, meant that many fans of the core Metroid Prime series were left wanting. But the game's graphics, and the fluidity of its gameplay, made up somewhat for the lackluster single player mode, especially since the game was actually focused on multiplayer. Much like the gameplay itself, the intention behind Metroid Prime's multiplayer was to showcase and take advantage of the capabilities of the new DS. The game's director, Masamichi Abe, even said in an interview, quote, When we first started the project, one of the main focuses of the DS hardware at that point in time was the wireless functionality and being able to play with other people wirelessly. Because of that, we felt that the multiplayer aspects of Metroid Prime Hunters were going to be very important, and that was kind of our starting point. The focus on multiplayer even led to the game's release being delayed until 2006, after negative feedback from E3 2005 criticized the game's lack of online functionality. The result, Metroid Prime Hunters, was the first in the entire Metroid series to have online multiplayer. During the added development time, the team also worked on small improvements to the game's graphics and overall visual effects, which helped it garner the previously mentioned high praise. So let's talk about Metroid Prime's multiplayer. It is shockingly robust. It features 26 playable maps, all based on areas found in the single player game, as well as seven different game modes. You have Battle, a typical deathmatch mode, Capture, which is Capture the Flag, but you also have other interesting modes. For example, Prime Hunter is the game's take on the Juggernaut game mode from Halo, where one person is the Juggernaut with buffed stats and everyone else is trying to take them down. You also have Bounty, where players are competing to find and deliver a crystal called the Octolith to a certain location on the map to win the game. In all these modes, players are able to pick and play as any of the bounty hunters from the single player game, with each gaining a special bonus based on their weapon in the story. For example, Samus has homing missiles when using the missile launcher. 
The hunters also have alternate forms. Samus has her Morph Ball, Silux has Lockjaw, Trace has Triskelion, etc. Ultimately, the focus on multiplayer paid off, and the gameplay has aged incredibly well. Metroid Prime Hunters feels like a handheld version of Quake or Unreal Tournament, and when it released, the game even had its own competitive scene sponsored by Nintendo. Yeah, you heard that right. An esports scene in 2006. Not... not really. When Metroid Prime Hunters released, Nintendo of Europe partnered with the music and entertainment retailer HMV <laughs> remember HMV? to host several events called the Hunt Is On Tournament. These events were hosted throughout the United Kingdom, with the winner receiving an all-expenses-paid trip to beautiful Seattle, Washington to meet the game's programmers. Yippee! The runners-up in the tournament would receive HMV vouchers, used to buy, I don't know, CDs and uh, HMV merchandise. These days, despite the DS servers being shut down since 2014, there's still a small community who continue to play online via emulator. They even host occasional tournaments from time to time. This group has put a lot of work to optimize the experience so that players can enjoy the game without sticking to their DS and stylus. You can play the game on mouse and keyboard, on your phone, or even using a controller. So, if you were watching this video and got sad because your mom sold your DS at a yard sale, fear not, you can still play the game. Metroid Prime Hunters was a bit of a departure from other Metroid Prime titles. While the game featured an amazing multiplayer mode that helped the game earn a reputation as one of the best FPS titles on the Nintendo DS, its focus on multiplayer over single player did not sit well with many fans of the original games. Hopefully, this part of the video ages poorly, and the upcoming Metroid Prime 4 has an equally amazing multiplayer mode just to shut us up. I mean, the main villain is literally Silux, who was featured in Hunters. Or maybe Metroid Prime Hunters will be remastered and ported to the Nintendo Switch. Who knows? But as it stands, Hunters was a revolutionary game in the portable console market, and one we'll remember fondly for years to come. If you want to learn about another Nintendo DS game that has a surprisingly great multiplayer mode, check out this video on Kid Icarus Uprising. And if you want to check out Metroid Prime Hunters multiplayer mode for yourself, check out the link in the description to join the Discord server where fans of the game can help you set everything up and find matches to start playing Metroid Prime Hunters for yourself. Shout out and thanks to Cloud, Steph, B, Pass, Shampoo, and Yashichi for being patrons of the channel. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is much appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.